Good morning, Facebook. Tim Anderson here, uh, December 26, 2018. Wanted to give you some perspective on the Warman versus Healy case. Uh, some things happened right before Christmas, and I wanted to push this information out for everyone to know about. So, Warman versus Healy is a case that comes from Massachusetts, which is directly on point with whether civilians can own um, semi automatic rifles. Um, whether they can own high capacity magazines. Uh, there's a, a lot of things that Warman versus Healy that are dealing with that's challenging the Massachusetts ban on these types of firearms. And so I'm going to take you all the way back to the Heller case. Okay, now it wasn't until the Heller case that we had a definitive decision from the United States Supreme Court that dealt with uh, civilians being able to own firearms for lawful self defense. It, and that just barely came out in the 2008 time period. And so for you know all of these years and all of this time, that was an unknown uh, variable. And so Dick Heller challenged a District of Columbia case uh, rule that said you, you know you can't you can't have firearms in the District of Columbia. So it went all the way to the Supreme Court of the United States and <clears throat> Heller, the Heller decision basically held that civilians are allowed to own firearms pursuant to the Second Amendment. Not just a militia, but civilians are allowed to own it as well. So, uh, my law, one of my law professors recently, one time told me in law school that rounding up judges is like herding cats. So, as soon as Heller came out, the circuit started again splitting and varying and going in different directions. And one of the questions was, is does the Second Amendment even apply to the states? So uh, shortly after Heller came out, uh, the McDonald case came down, and uh, there, it clearly stated that through the privileges and immunities protections of the 14th Amendment that the Second Amendment applies to the states. Okay, so all that's uh, been established. But unfortunately in Heller, Justice Scalia said that we are only allowed to have weapons that are in common use and that are not uh, unique. Uh, and he used some examples like uh, uh, M16s and tanks, for instance. And so since Heller, the courts have uh, been taking this approach called a intermediate scrutiny approach that has said, hey, all these um, uh, AR-15s and uh, high capacity magazines, those are not commonly in use and those are more like weapons of war. And that's how all these courts have taken these positions uh, that the state has this competing interest to protect the public and these are not common uses. Okay, so that's where we are. And everybody probably knows that if you've watched any of my videos, I've covered this multiple times. But here's a case that you probably haven't heard about, which is Heller part two. Um, so as soon as Heller came down, the District of Columbia started passing more regulations dealing with firearm registration and dealing with rifle registration and dealing with capacity issues on, um, on magazines. And so Dick Heller again challenged that. Now, you've, never, you've probably never heard about this case because this case uh, died a very quiet death. But what's very interesting about Heller Part 2 is Dick Heller went in and challenged those decisions and it went back up to the District of Columbia Court of Appeals and in a two to one uh, decision, the, uh, that case was remanded back to <clears throat> the District of Columbia District Court. Now, the reason nobody's ever heard of it is because it never made it up to the Supreme Court. It was remanded, which meant it was sent back down to the District Court and at the district court level, the, uh, the judges had to basically put the record together a little bit more conclusively on whether they needed a, uh, a, a ban on a long rifle or either some type of a semi-automatic ban on long rifles or registration of long rifles. And there was all this com confusing and competing evidence that got sent back. So normally when that happens, you know, the district court goes down and clears up its record and the case kind of pops back up. 
But then uh, when that was happening in 2010, 2012 happened and DC imposed even more restrictions on firearms. And so the Heller Part Two case died and we really never got that case up to the Supreme Court. However, here's what's interesting about Heller uh, Part Two is there was a single judge in the District of Court of Columbia Circuit Court who wrote a 50-page dissent opinion to the majority in such a way, and, and I've very rarely ever seen this in the law, but you have two judges that are writing the majority opinion at the District of Court Columbia uh, Circuit Court, and they're basically saying why you know they're supporting their decision and then they are sending it back. But then following that, there's about an eight or nine page opinion of why the the crazy judge who's writing the 50 page dissent is all wrong. So they were not only writing their, their majority opinion, but they were also writing a rebuttal opinion as to why this crazy judge has uh, written this 50 page opinion. Now it is unheard of that a judge would write a 50 page dissent opinion when the case is being remanded. <clears throat> he's not writing it for the purposes of going to the United States Supreme Court. He's just writing his disdain uh, and his uh, disbelief of why the courts are doing what they're doing. Now, get, let me just summarize this 50-page opinion into one sentence. I mean, it's, it's as best as I can get. It says, in my judgment, both DC's ban on semi-automatic rifles and its gun registration requirements are unconstitutional under Heller. Okay. Now that's one sentence out of 50 pages, but why would a judge write a 50 page dissent opinion? Because he's interviewing. He's interviewing for a United States Supreme Court justice position, hoping that a Republican gets uh, elected and he's interviewing for that president. And do you know who that judge was? Brett Kavanaugh. That's right. Brett Kavanaugh was the judge. And he is a staunch, staunch uh, gun rights supporter and Second Amendment supporter. Uh, and he, if you read his 50-page opinion, you will see where he stands. And now he is a Supreme Court justice. He will be the driving force behind whether Warman versus Healy is going to uh, be granted cert because he wants that 50-page opinion that he wrote, he wants obviously that to become the law. And if his dissent opinion were to become the law, <clears throat> then semi-automatic uh, rifles would be legal. High-capacity magazines would, would be legal. Uh, all of these laws that the states have passed uh, under this intermediate scrutiny Heller test will be thrown out. So here's where Warman versus Healy stands. It's going to committee on January 10th. Now here's what committee ba conference basically means at the Supreme Court level. Basically the justices get into a conference room and they, they do a couple of things. The first one is, is that they're going to look at all of the cases that uh, are being asked to be heard. Now kind of keep this in mind. The Supreme Court hears seven or get 7,000 cases a year and they only hear about a hundred. So most, even cases with really good, good merit don't make it, but there are going to be, you know, some cases that are accepted. And at this conference, they're going to be talking about it in the rooms by themselves, no law clerks, no police, no court reporters, just amongst themselves about who, how, and what cases that they want to take. And I have a feeling that Brett Kavanaugh is going to be a vocal uh, force in that hearing uh, if he, you know, based upon Heller Part 2 and that opinion that he wrote. And so January 10th, that is all going down at the Supreme Court uh, with all of the justices. So I think very heavily that with Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh, and uh, uh, John Roberts, and Clarence Thomas, that they are going to, uh, they are all staunch uh, gun, gun supporters, and I think you're going to see a very uh, good chance that Warman versus Healy is going to be accepted. Now, cert doesn't mean anything, just means they're going to hear the case, but if they, if they do hear the case and uh, they rule uh, that these, that certain firearms are protected by the Second Amendment, then that is going to eviscerate all of the gun laws in the United States that have popped up, uh, these gun bans, 
these assault weapons bans, these high capacity magazine bans, these registrations that states are requiring, uh, there that it will eviscerate all of that. So Warman versus Healy is the case to watch. Set your calendars for mid January uh, for some type of an update. We probably won't know till the end of January, early February, if they're even going to take it. Uh, if they don't take it, then we are stuck with the Colby case in the Fourth Circuit, and I've done a whole video about that, and it's not good. So hopefully, fingers crossed, Warman versus Healy comes down. Uh, take a look at the opinion. I, I posted Judge Kavanaugh's opinion up here. Uh, scroll down to uh, about 15, 16 pages, 20 pages into the opinion, and you're going to see where Judge Kavanaugh starts ripping it up. Uh, and now he is Justice Kavanaugh, so we know where he stands on that. So uh, you can thank Donald Trump for that one. All right, guys, have a great day, and we will see uh, see you tomorrow.